Hi everyone, back with a bit of an update video here. So for those of you who have been following my channel, you'll sort of know my backstory here with Blue Yeti. But for those who are new, this is my second Blue Yeti unit. I had an EB200P prior to this, uh, but it had a bit of a faulty screen. So paid the difference upon returning the faulty unit and upgraded to the AC Max. Definitely uh, highly recommend in doing so. Uh, the AC Max, while it has some subtle differences, those differences are pretty important. Uh, so obviously the expanded batteries is a really nice feature, even though you can do that on the EV200P. The uh, firmware upgrades are really handy via the Bluetooth app, and there is actually a BMS update that is currently pending for the AC Max. Um, uh, and also I like the uh, the power brick, the 500 watt power brick that comes with it instead of the 400 watt. And uh, a big a big bonus is the two extra years uh, warranty that you get with the AC Max ecosystem. And that is not provided with the EB200P. So uh, at the moment the, the Blue Yeti in Australia is on the Boxing Day sale. It's being advertised for a great price. Now look, I'm not, I'm not um, spruiking this, I'm not paid by Blue Yeti. But I really do love the AC Max. It's a great system. And I think that uh, if you are considering getting one, highly recommend it. If you're on the fence about whether you're going for an AC200P or an EB200P, if you can afford the little bit extra, I would highly recommend going with the AC Max. If, if nothing else, the extra two years warranty is just peace of mind. And it is on sale at the moment. I think it's two and a half thousand I think from memory at the moment but it is on sale so uh, yeah go go to the Blue Yeti page and you can you can check it out so I've got the uh, the blue the AC Max here but over here I've got the two EB200 uh, batteries sorry the B230 batteries too many acronyms and uh, and basically um, I've had these two units here now for uh, a couple of months and they've been running flawlessly it is uh, self-managing system I don't really need to do anything to it and I, and I use it every day it powers a lot of our discretionary devices so how do I charge it uh, for those of you who have watched my other videos uh, you'll know I've got two arrays feeding the unit so I've got obviously the primary uh, solar input and, and you can see at the moment we're maxing that out we're getting 920 watts but I then got a secondary array which is feeding the uh, AC input port on the Blue Yeti here, on the AC Max. And that's obviously being powered by the enhanced DC charger here. And, uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with my previous videos, I have the external meters here for both arrays. And the main reason I do that is just to, for validation, make sure what I'm seeing on the Blue Yeti is correct. But these two meters also provide a cumulative total. So I can see over the course of a billing cycle how much power I've generated off grid and, uh, and therefore how much to expect as a reduction on my mains electricity bill. So uh, we'll go through a little bit about capacity in a minute. I'll take you through you know, what the theoretical limits of the, the Blue Yeti are or capacity of the Blue Yeti and, uh, and also um, you know, how much I'm actually generating and how much I'm actually saving off my, uh, off my bill every, every period. So uh, we'll go through a little bit of that. Uh, we are using this every day. Um, so this lead here I've got runs underneath my uh, home office and it powers my home office when my home computer and uh, work computer are all on, that whole system chews about 300 watts. The other lead I have here runs over and is to a power board over here. And I've actually got it going back down uh, under the house to my switchboard. And I've got it powering a couple of circuits, uh, just PowerPoint circuits that run out through the rest of the house. So everything in the lounge room, and everything in the bedroom uh, and a couple of other things uh, in the in the kitchen are also powered by the Blue Yeti. So uh, we'll go through a little bit about the uh, capacity and uh, and how much I'm uh, I'm actually able to uh, to effectively use every day out of this system. Okay, let's have a look at some figures here, folks. So we want to talk a little bit about the overarching capacity of the MAX. 
Now your situation may be a little different to mine and I have made some generalizations for these numbers just to make things a tad easier. Okay, so they may not be perfect, but they will give you an indication. So I'm driving two arrays into my Blue Eddy Max. So the primary array, I've averaged it at 920 watts for seven hours. It actually generates power for, you know, probably around 10. Um, but obviously in the morning and the afternoons, it's not maximum. So just to make the calculation a little easier, I've rounded it down to seven hours for full input. Likewise, on the secondary array, I put it to 450 watts and I've estimated five hours that we can generate at that power level. So roughly that gives me a daily generation capacity of around eight and a half uh, kilowatt hours per day. So how does that shape up to my usage? Okay, so let's come down and have a little bit of a look here. So we'll skip right to the end uh, and come back through. So I'm using roughly from my calculations about 88% of my solar generation capacity in a given day. So therefore I'm not maxing out the system. I do have a little bit of headroom there and I'm able to not only support my usage throughout the day, but replenish the usage I have taken out of the battery at night. So let's just have a look at that breakdown. So roughly, the system is in standby usage for about 10 hours a day, which is night when we're asleep. And that standby usage with all the devices in the house connected is around 250 watts. So I multiply that out by roughly 10 hours, giving me two and a half kilowatt hours of consumption. Now this is actually pretty correct because in the mornings when I get up, um, the Blue Eddy batteries, the whole system is down uh, to around 50%. Now I've got uh, six kilowatts, six kilowatt hours of battery capacity. So if we're using approximately 3000 kilowatt hours in the evening, there's a couple of hours maybe here, three hours in the evening when we're at our peak usage, and then the remainder is going into uh, the nighttime standby operation. So when I sort of turn the panels off, everything shuts down around 5 36 p.m uh, and then in the morning when i get up uh, everything's sitting at around around six o'clock everything's sitting at around uh, 50 percent charged day to day when i'm in the office here uh, i'm using about 350 watts that's generally my day-to-day -day usage so i've given that eight hours and that gives us uh, 2.8 kilowatt hours and our peak usage is where I'm using the home office and maybe we have a television on at night. Uh, so I've estimated around six hours for that period and, uh, and that gives us 2.4 kilowatt hours. So all up, all totaled up, we're, we're using in a, in a 24 hour period around seven and a half kilowatt hours. Now actually my overarching production might be a little higher than this. Uh, on some days I have actually seen it getting up around the nine to 10. So really this figure here is probably more accurately, if we did a more accurate daytime power generation over a few days, we might see that this percentage is actually closer to 75 or thereabouts. But generally speaking, not too bad. It is a little bit tight though. I don't have a huge amount of headroom in my generation. So if I do get a day that is very cloudy and I'm not generating anywhere near this much power, I either A, won't recharge my batteries adequately or I will need to find some power savings throughout the day. So as a battery autonomy system it's not all that great. I mean I only have about you know a day to two maybe one and a half to two days of battery autonomy so I do need to top up with the sun every single day. But fortunately where I am here though we are in a very sunny area here on the Tropic of Capricorn and even when it's a cloudy day or an overcast day we can generally pull you know about 500 uh, watts to 600 watts in total from from both the arrays so it's enough to cover my day-to-day -day needs and it will top up the battery a little bit for night but if I get more than a day or two of consecutive overcast days where I'm not producing my full capacity my battery definitely is, is not um, charging up and there's not enough autonomy there to last for more than say one and a half to two days. So as a standalone system, it's, it's not uh, ideal because there's really not enough battery autonomy there. If you get a week of bad weather, you're gonna run out of power. But I'm not using this as a standalone, completely off-grid system. It's there to be off-grid when it's available and if it's not available, well then I can top things up with some mains. 
So overall, we are really putting the Blue Yeti to some good usage, uh, and we are really trying to uh, to make good usage of, of the day to day. Now you can see here, even with these low usage uh, wattage values, over the time frame of the course of the day, it all starts to add up. So when people put things on Facebook or on uh, on the Blue Yeti groups about they want to run an aircon for 12 hours, you're going to need a huge amount of battery autonomy in order to do that just for 24 hours. And that's not going to be possible with an AC Max. So you do need to think if you're planning an off-grid system, you know, what is your long-term usage? And if you're seeing this up over over you know 500 for any length of serious time, it's really going to start chewing into your overarching capacity. Now there is a, a way where you could add a little bit of capacity um, to this system. You could possibly over panel these arrays and you could then increase the amount of time in the day that you're actually uh, obtaining full uh, charge. So you might be able to bump those up maybe eight to nine hours and, and here you might be able to get it up to five or six. But this is just for the head unit, right? These are just the two inputs on the head unit. If you've got a B230, or if you have two of them, like I do, that's two additional inputs that you can actually use. They have their own inputs, and if you get yourself a, an enhanced DC charger, just as I've done for the uh, AC charging port on the head unit, I could run another array into each of these B230s. And that could potentially give me, you know, 450 watts. Let's be, um, let's be a little generous here and we'll say that, you know, that, that these are going to be primaries and they can both produce, you know, um, 750 watts for, um, for the daily output. And just to think, you know, what's this going to give you? 450 by 7 gives us uh, 3,150. 350. So that's an extra 6,300 watt hours you could potentially drive into the, the, the system here to give you that extra power. Now, this will help you during the day while you are generating power. But if your nighttime standby usage is going to be high, you're going to really chew into your batteries. But uh, obviously, you know, if that's the case and you're okay with that and you're able to generate this additional input, you know, that you could definitely increase the capacity. So, for example, if I were to say that I had this kind of an arrangement on my Blue Yeti system here, so instead of the 8.7 um, kilowatt hour system, I had I add the extra 6.3, so 15 kilowatt hours per day. And if we said my 7.7 .7 divided by 15, so that's roughly only 50% of the capacity. So you could probably uh, increase your charging rate, uh, so you could charge up a little bit quicker during the day when the sun came out, but you're still going to be limited by your six kilowatt hour of battery storage. So once that sun drops away, you know, you're going to have at least you know, 12 to 15 hours, depending on where you are, you know, where you're not going to be generating power through that period. So bear this in mind when planning your system. You need to understand what's your generation capacity and then of course what your standby usage will be when you're not generating to see if your batteries will last long enough but then you need to look at your load to make sure that you're not pushing uh, this up too high to the total daily generation or you won't have enough headroom there to uh, to recharge your battery if uh, if you don't have optimal power generating conditions so there's a little bit of thinking that needs to go into this when you are sizing up a system you need to look at what is your overarching you know, energy input, uh, how much battery storage you have, and then of course what your day-to-day -day usage is going to look like. So all these things need to be considered when planning an off-grid system. Well, I hope you enjoyed that today. Thanks very much for taking part, and uh, good luck with your Blue Yeti system.